Out here in the Midwest, we're pretty unfortunate because we don't always get a white Christmas. Yeah, I mean, for us this year, we had a 70 degree weather on Christmas. <laughs> Although we do enjoy our snow, not having too much of it can actually be a blessing in disguise. Hi, I'm Shaker. And I'm Sukish, and this is Medicine, Medicine Made, Made Simple. Simple. Thanks for joining us on Season 1, Episode 2 of our Medicine Made Simple podcast. With the holidays just passing us by and snow hitting all parts of the world differently, we thought we'd do something different for an episode. Today, we're going to examine a phenomenon that sends thousands of people to the emergency room and even kills some people every year. Shoveling snow is actually one of the most dangerous chores to perform in the winter season. Personally, we like to call this event sho Snow Shoveling Strain, which is kind of a tongue twister and a mouthful. I know I've messed it up quite a few times before we recorded this bit. And <laughs> you just messed it up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But today, we will specifically take a look into how this snow shoveling strain happens, some, statist some statistics behind it, and finally, how we can prevent ourselves from encountering this harm. So Shaker, why are people dying from shoveling snow? Well, Sukesh, the primary factor that shoveling snow has been related to is actually cardiovascular problems, namely heart attack. But how are these two instances related? So researchers at Harvard Medical School found four main reasons as to how shoveling snow leads to injury or even death. So right off the bat, Shoveling snow raises our heart rate and blood pressure really quickly in a short period of time. So it's a lot more strenuous or stressful than the other types of exercise that we might do daily. Second, shoveling snow means using our arms, which can be pretty taxing for most people who don't regularly work out like myself. <laughs> yeah, me included. <laughs> so third, removing snow means that you're standing out in freezing and even below freezing temperatures. This causes our blood vessels and blood pathways to constrict, meaning that they narrow, and then your body actually receives less blood flow. Finally, and most importantly, most people who shovel snow do so right after being stationary or unmoving. This means they start overburdening their body system without getting their body ready first. The big idea here is, if your body goes from being in a state of rest, like sitting or lying down, to all of a sudden shoveling snow, it actually takes a huge toll on your heart. Wow. So what about our viewers who don't have these heart issues? Do you think it's just safe to go out and shovel some snow? Well, honestly, we have to think again. Let's look at the stats. According to Healthline.com, every year 137,000 people are treated for injuries related to shoveling snow, and of those, 28,000 end up in the emergency room. And that's about 0.04% of the population which may not sound like a lot, but let's put that into perspective. You have over 100,000 people hospitalized from trying to clear their driveway every single year. Yeah, exactly. And some of those incidents are even deadly. About 7% of the hospitalizations were related to heart problems, and around 100 people a year lose their lives from a heart attack just because of shoveling snow. Sukesh, what other injuries can happen? Well, on top of what you just said, Shaker, more than half of the injuries are injuries to like soft tissue, muscles, tendons, and ligaments, and this causes bruising, swelling, and a lot of pain. Even lacerations and cuts make up about 16% of these injuries, and fractured bones accounts for about um, 7%. And it doesn't just stop there. The Canadian Medical Association Journal published data from some researchers in Quebec, actually 30 years worth of data for that matter, and they found that the deepness of snow combined with how long it snows in a certain area is actually linked to higher hospitalization rates at the time, specifically a 16% increase in hospitalizations and a 34% increase in deaths. And almost all of these hospital hospitalizations were to men. So the studies have found causative links between injury rates of men and shoveling snow, but no observations were able to be made about women. Shigar, what else do we know about snow shoveling strain? 
Well, first of all, you're able to pronounce it without messing up like I do because oh, it yeah. really is a mouthful to say. But on top of that, the most common way that people ended up in the hospital or the ER was from overexerting their musculoskeletal system, basically their muscles and bones. That accounted for over half the causes. And about 20% was from slips and falls and 15% of people are just hit with a snow shovel, just like I hit myself the other day with a shovel after the New Year's snow we just had. Well, I'm surprised that you were shoveling snow, first of all. And yes, I am very proud of the fact that I can snay. I can snay, yes. I can snay snow shoveling strain. <laughs> and just to explore the science a little bit more, let's talk about the Valsalva effect. So basically, most people shoveling snow will hold their breath while moving the snow, just like I'm trying to hold my breath while I'm trying to finish my segment right here. But this in turn puts a lot of strain on your respiratory and cardiac systems, causing high blood pressure. And that's why I tried to make it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's why a lot of people can get heart attacks. <laughs> There's also another factor that leads to these heart attacks, and it has to do with your circadian rhythm. Now, we explained what this phenomena is in our YouTube video about sleep, which you can find on our channel, link in the description. But for a brief explanation, your circadian rhythm is the internal cycle that your body follows that tells it when to sleep and when to wake up. And most people tend to shovel snow in the morning, you know, and they need to get to work or drop their kids off at school. And this is a pretty big problem because people tend to be in a hurry so they're not late and they're exerting themselves to even more pressure from being in such a rush. Right, and the other thing is that they're doing this work early in the morning where your circadian rhythm is telling your body to wake up. And according to Dr. Richard Fogaros, a retired professor of medicine and board certified internal medicine physician and cardiologist, this circadian rhythm means that humans are more prone to cardiovascular incidents in the morning. AKA shoveling snow in the morning increases your chances of a heart attack compared to the afternoon or even early evening. Wow, that's pretty crazy. No wonder so many people end up in the hospital after shoveling snow. Yeah, exactly. And to recap, today we talked about how snow shoveling can strain the body because you go from resting to acting. Plus the cold narrows our blood vessels. But even disregarding the heart problems, over 100,000 people get hurt and over 28,000 of them are sent to the ER. And most commonly people come to the ER for the sprains, cuts, fractures, and of course the heart problems, all caused by overexertions, hits, slips, and falls. But Shaker, can you tell us some of the steps we can take to prevent these injuries? Yeah, so the National Safety Council recommends a few tips. There are some minor things like don't shovel right after eating or smoking, or shovel fresh powdery snow because it's lighter. But then there are the more important things like take it slow and stretch before you shovel snow. That way you don't overexert yourself. Instead of going from a period of rest to a period of high activity, just slowly work your way up. And the same goes for afterwards. Don't just clear the snow, go inside and lie down on the couch. You want to ease the activity down so that you don't put too much stress on your heart. And on top of what Shaker just said, you should never actually physically lift the snow. Instead, we can use the shovel to like push the snow and this helps in several ways. First, we're not actually putting as much force into the shovel. Second, this helps combat what we just talked about earlier, the Valsalva effect. So this way we're not holding our breath and putting a bunch of stress on our cardiovascular system. Now, if we do have to lift the snow, make sure that you lift it with your legs and not your back. And also using a small shovel can partially fill the shovel or partially fill the shovel so that you do not get exhausted. Speaking of which, try not to work yourself to the point of exhaustion. If you ever feel tired, take a break and stop. Know the signs of a heart attack, like chest discomfort, shortness of breath, and nausea, and stop immediately and call 911 if you're experiencing any of them, since every moment counts. And not only if you're experiencing it, but if you see someone else experiencing it outside while they're shoveling snow, make sure to call 911. And remember guys, thousands of people every year are hospitalized from some sort of heart-related problem from shoveling snow. It can only take a couple months of planning and warming up to avoid a potential lifetime of misery and a pretty severe dent to our pocket, regardless of health insurance. <laughs> 
And if you do have a history of heart disease, please try to avoid that shovel. If by chance you're using a snowblower instead of a shovel though, it still pays to follow some tips, right Sukesh? Yeah, definitely. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons actually recommends turning off the blower if it jams, keeping our hands away from the moving parts, and adding fuel outdoors before it starts and not during the process. Also, the carbon monoxide is released during this process, and if you're using it indoors, never leave the machine attended, unattended. So basically, use common sense while using a electric snow shovel or snow blower, not electric snow shovel. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cool. You could actually have someone do it for you. Speaking of which, if you're able to just hire someone who's more able to actually shovel the snow if you really need to clear your driveway, especially if you have a heart problem or you have some sort of chronic ailment or illness, it's never worth a clear driveway to have all of this terrible stuff happen to you. And the worst case scenario is you go get a engineering degree from a top university and then Elon Musk hires you and then you can patent this project <laughs> and sell it for millions of dollars. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Today, we went over snow shoveling and how dangerous it is compared to what most people actually think. The silent killer has claimed hundreds of lives and caused hundreds of thousands of injuries for years. And we can avoid becoming a statistic, literally, by taking the proper precautionary measures, such as stretching, pushing, and knowing our limits. If you'd like to learn more about heart disease, shoveling snow, or any of the topics we covered in this episode, check out the links in the description. And if you still have questions, leave a comment down below if you're on the YouTube version, or email us at ssmedicinemadesimple at gmail.com, or you can DM us on Instagram, and our handle is ssmedicinemadesimple. You can drop a question down below, let us know what you thought, or even give us future idea, video ideas on both the Spotify and YouTube or Google podcast versions. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you next time. Until then, I'm Shaker. And I'm Sukish. And this is Medicine, Medicine Made, Made Simple. Simple. And always remember to live, live happy, happy and healthy. And healthy.